Hello, still deconstructing my uh, YouTube setup and today we're just talking about guitar setup and even though I've got my um, Faith Blood Moon here, this beautiful thing, look at the state of this, I very nearly spent three times more than this guitar cost me on what would have been a very lovely Martin. I, I, I'm not going to criticise Martins at all. But every review I read about the Faith Blood Moon just said buy one of these. Everything I want. As I'm set up now, this is pretty much exactly how I would record if I was playing the, the acoustic guitar. It's a converted garage, so I've got a vaulted ceiling. There are angles and weird kind of corners on the room. It's a, it's a very unusual shaped room, and I think that helps the acoustics a lot. Just over a year ago, I decided to go entirely digital, and I'm just starting to step back from that process now. Because I discovered that no matter how hard you try, and some of the big multi-effects plug-in manufacturers now I've got Amplitude and um, Guitar Rig 6 they're both fabulous and between them they can get you a really really good sound but have you ever heard one of these have you ever heard one of these going into one of these the signal would come out of one of these <laughs> into there and probably Go on to something like that. Or maybe, I don't know, one of them. Now, I don't know actually, it's green, isn't it? So the green screen's catching it. It doesn't, <laughs> it doesn't want to show you my face. But uh, you might not be able to see it because of the green screen behind. But that says PH1R there. Japanese. Or maybe one of these. And it just goes on and on for, 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 for quite a long time. I, of course, I'm putting them too close to the camera, aren't I? Because it's in manual focus mode. They, they should all be up over here. But um, now this is my entire collection of boss pedals uh, accumulated over a hem years. They all, at the moment, uh, mostly sit on a shelf being completely unused because as I say, I, I tried to, to do the whole digital thing and I'm just coming to the conclusion now that I need to be a little bit more um, reasonable with that decision. A couple of months ago, I went upstairs and got out of the storage, just don't judge me, my um, Voodoo Labs um, Mondo pedal power, uh, which basically just can power pretty much everything I want it to. I have two um, boss pedal um, boards that when I'm when the stomp boxes are in full pomp, I have both of these um, boss pedal boards. I'll go and get one. So yeah, this is the the BCB60. It's a bit difficult to show you the entire thing, but just a flight case kind of thing. For two of these. So yeah, the pedals sit in there quite happily, and then all of the uh, power cables get rooted under this thing so it's all nice and seamless and at the heart of it all the one thing that has survived everything saying going completely in the box that's not entirely true because there's a boss gt100 just down here uh, which has always been part of the setup if nothing else it's just a, a great preamp gets a nice hot signal going into the focus right uh, i've got a, a boss tu2 tuner Hands down the best tuner. There's some, I think there's actually a genie in that box because I've never come up against any, any other tuner that can do what it does. And then I've got a Cantrell JC95 Signature Wah, which whenever, there's a couple of tracks actually um, of the, the stuff that I've released that do have uh, wah on them. That's just sat around the corner. So whenever I need a wah, I'll, I'll kind of, it, it's, it's sat waiting to go, fully powered all the time. I can just bring it around into the setup and plug my guitar into that instead of straight into the into the tuner. So I've got lots of nice effects. All of that um, goes into the GT100 in mono. So if it's going to go into the pedals, it'll go into the pedals. 
ultimately ends up in the GT100. That allows me to control the output signal to the focus, right? Um, the GT100 outputs a stereo signal and I've just left it alone. I've let the GT100 do its thing because it turns mono into stereo in the most wonderful Japanese way. Roland obviously own Boss, but between those two companies, the parent and subsidiary company, they just own keyboards and guitars. They do the best things of, of both of those varieties, the Jupiter 8, the Juno 106, every Boss, well, every Boss Stomp pedal that was ever built in Japan is magnificent and all of my stuff you know that's proper you will definitely won't be able to see that because it's a green label and that means it was made in japan so yeah all of that comes into um inputs five and six on the focus right uh, and then straight into the straight into cubase so here's my bass it's a Fender Jazz Professional. Uh, slate blue, I think the colour is. It's absolutely gorgeous. I really love the colour. The moment I saw this in the shop, I was like, yep, that's the fella. In fact, when I bought this, um, I basically kind of gave up the guitar. For, for about two years after buying this thing, I didn't touch the, the electric guitar and considered myself to be a non-guitar player. I just completely dedicated myself to the bass and really, really loved it. And then the guitar wheedled its way back into the uh, into my affections like a, a dog, you know, nuzzling to get under your arm. Uh, and now they're pretty much, you know, equal uh, contributors in the music. The, the very few pieces of music that I write that won't have both live electric bass and live guitars of one form or another. Every guitar has a guitar strap. Cannot be doing with swapping guitar straps over. Now, only electric guitarists will be jealous of this one because most of you won't recognize it. It's an Ibanez JS1000. I believe it's a 99. I know it's got the original edge uh, tremolo, the proper, the proper tremolo system, although it doesn't have the bar in at the moment. Um, in absolutely magnificent condition. I bought this off somebody on uh, eBay a few years ago who said basically he couldn't, it was unplayable. And when I bought it, it the action was at about a centimeter. I have absolutely no idea. I think he hadn't, or he or she, they, hadn't looked up how to actually adjust the floating trim. And it was just, it was literally unplayable. So I took the entire thing to bits, I did all of my research, watched all my videos, uh, my, my, my setup videos, um, and spent the most joyous day, you know, getting this thing sorted and once it was all back together again. So I used this one, um, I mean, I don't play fast ever, so it's kind of, you know, wasted in my hands, but it is easier to play than the Strat. So this is actually the guitar that I play more often than not. And even though it's a little bit more cumbersome and it doesn't have the incredibly dry, like your hand just falls off the JS-1000. It's so smooth, it's amazing. JS-1000 is a nicer guitar to play, but I think this actually sounds better. The main reason I play it more than the, 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 the JS-1000 is because I've screwed the bridge down absolutely flat. So it really doesn't have a floating trim. I, you, you can lift it if you absolutely have to, but it just means that the, the tuning is rock solid. I don't use the tremolo bar on this guitar. I also, you'll be able to see, this is sacrilegious. Took, the, uh, took one of the volume knobs off. It's where my hand sits is exactly where Fender put their volume control. So um, I uh, reconfigured the two tone controls. So I've got a slightly unique tone set up on this guitar because I've only got one tone control. Both of the tone modules in the guitar feed into it and the volume uh, control is one step down. Now that I've done all that, I feel kind of bad for not using it more. Um, 
I'll do better. That's my guitar setup. I um, hope you enjoyed that. And if you did, please consider subscribing, hit notifications, and you'll find out when the next episode in this epic series comes out. Hope to see you then. Thanks a lot.